Hello, it is I, Merlinster Gandeldor. Today, we're going to make a character for Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 1st Edition. Mm-hmm. Why? Oh, because I want to. Can I make a character on my own channel without getting a third degree about it? Yeesh. Step 1. Select the right dice for the job. Choosing the dice you want is an important task. Don't underestimate the value. It's good to warm them up with practice rolls, but don't try to cheat and say a good practice roll is your actual first roll. That's just not cricket. However, if your rolls suck, you are allowed to shame the dice on the internet, as is the fashion, so they learn their lesson. Step 2. Once you have chosen the dice and warmed them up with rolling exercises, you may optionally select a dice tower. I prefer the demon idol for um, personal reasons, but if you have a dice tower molded closer to your own tastes and or religion, then use your freedom of religion to express yourself proudly. Freedom of religion may not be available in all countries. Please check with your local unruly mob to see if your chosen beliefs will or will not get you burned at the stake. Step 3. Roll the dice. Whether into demonic dice towers, or just boringly flat on the table, we roll the dice to find our six main attributes. Mm -hmm. Of course, the player's handbook is oddly quiet on what dice to roll, so we must go to the Dungeon Master's Guide to find this and other player-facing information that has been correctly hidden away from players' greedy eyes. The stern warning in the Dungeon Master's Guide about players being punished for transgressions is also not to be taken lightly. This channel does not in any way endorse, encourage, or support the death, honorable or otherwise, of other players for any reason. Except not subscribing. Please subscribe immediately. Fortunately for us, I am a trained and licensed dungeon master with full authority to enter this forbidden territory. There are four rolling options here, one very good one, and three needlessly overdone methods that you should ignore because they are dumb. Method 1. Rolling 4d6 and dropping the lowest, then assigning the stats as desired, is just right for the needs of this game. It's quick, efficient, and variable. Anything else is superfluous. Gary Gygax suggests that you should have two scores, no less than 15, but we don't play that kiddie table stuff here. You keep what you get, unless you roll two scores of five or less and don't technically qualify for any class. Only then may you start over. So, I roll the dice, and I have rolled 10, 16, 7, 15, 12, 17. Hmm, very good. Step 4. Figure out what you want to play, and assign the roles appropriately. If you rolled a 5 or less in one stat, where you put it determines which class you may be. Note that some races also have attribute requirements, so pay attention to those. A 5 in strength means you can only be a magic user. A 5 in intelligence means you can only be a fighter. A 5 in wisdom means you can only be a thief. A 5 in dexterity means you can only be a cleric. A 5 in constitution means you can only be an illusionist. But note, you must also qualify for an illusionist otherwise with a 16 dexterity and a 15 intellect. And a 5 in charisma means you can only be an assassin. And likewise, you must still qualify for the other stats too, required to be an assassin. Given what I've rolled, I shall go with a half-elven fighter cleric magic user, which is a multi-class option completely unique to the half-elf. As such, I've assigned my abilities as follows. Looking at the requirements, I see that I do indeed qualify. Obviously, a 17 strength is enough for a fighter. Multi-class cleric half-elves require a 13 in wisdom, as noted under the cleric class, and a 9 in intellect is sufficient to be a magic user, so my 12 is more than enough, though he's more of a dabbler. Being half-elven adds no ability modifiers, so the stats will remain until we factor in aging. I will note the racial abilities like infravision and such. 
Any player only familiar with 3rd edition onwards might be mildly perplexed at the ability to take all of your classes at once. But that's simply how it was done in old school. Only non-humans can multi-class, and you get the abilities all at level 1. The trade-off is that your levels are limited in advancement, and you must advance in all three classes at once, by dividing your experience points among them, resulting in slower progress. Hmm, but such is the price of versatility. Step 5. I will now check for my secondary skill and my age. For my secondary skill, I have rolled a 59, meaning I'm a traitor or barter. For age, as a multi-class, I automatically default to the oldest possible combination. You'll see that a half-elf cleric has a base age of 40, which is the highest of the options. And further, the half-elf magic user has a variable age roll of 2d8, meaning I must add the maximum, which is 16, for a total of 56 years old. Looking at the age chart for various races, half-elves hit maturity at 41 and remain in their prime until roughly 100 years old, at which point they hit middle age. Must be nice. With my age determined, I will now look at modifiers for the age categories. Starting with the young adult category, I apply the aging modifier and work up to my current age. That's plus one constitution, minus one to wisdom for being young adult. Then, plus one to wisdom at maturity, so that's a wash, and an additional plus one to strength, which takes me to 18. And since I have a fighter class, I may now roll for exceptional strength. Dice indicate 26. Now that my constitution is set, I will also roll for my first level hit points. As I'm a multi-class with three classes, I will roll the three appropriate dice, add the constitution modifier for each, then divide the total by the number of classes for my hit points. Any fraction less than a full half is rounded down. Any fraction of 0.5 or more is rounded up. It's important to note the actual rolls as you will track them continuously throughout the character's career and adjust whenever each class achieves a new level. I roll a d10 for fighter, a d8 for cleric, and a d4 for magic user. I score 10 on the d10, so that's good, but just a 2 on the d8, and finally a 3 on the d4. Now I add them together for a total of 15. Then I add 6 for constitution, that's a plus 2 for each class because my constitution is 16. The total is now 21. Divide by 3 classes gives me an even 7 hit points to start. Not too shabby at all. While we're here, let's do our weight, height, and note our saving throws. I roll percentage for my height, checking within a range to see if I'm short, tall, or fall into the average. Two rolls confirm that I am 5'6", which is average for a male half-elf. I do the same for weight, over, under, or average. Two rolls confirm that I am 130 pounds, average for a half-elf. Saving throws for multi-class take the best value for your available classes. Another handy perk. Step 6. Magic. Since one of my classes is a magic user, I must determine my starting magic. I'll do this one quickly, but if you want a more in-depth exploration of how it's done, check out my video on starting magic for Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 1st Edition characters. Click on the card above if you want to watch that video. Wait, but where'd it go? It was here a minute ago. Ah, there it is. Go ahead, or finish watching this video if you prefer, and watch that one later. Either way. So, I get read magic to start, and I roll three times in the DMG to see my starting spells. With an intellect of 12, I have a minimum of five, so I must determine one more. Every failed roll goes to a block list of spells I cannot learn. The cleric doesn't need to do such checks, as they have access to all available spells, but I will confirm my bonus spells for wisdom. A wisdom of 16 grants me two first and two second level spells. Of course, I can't access second level spells until I reach level 3. But once I do, I can add the bonus. Step 7. Starting money. The common interpretation here for multi-class characters is that they gain the most beneficial of options. Likewise, my starting weapon proficiencies will be based on the best of the three classes, that being the fighter, who gets four. I do suggest rolling money before choosing your weapon proficiencies, as your starting funds may affect what you can afford. So, rolling 5d4 times 10, I get... 
100 gold pieces, just a touch below average for a 5d4 roll. I will now buy my equipment. As a multi-class fighter and cleric, I'm not restricted to blunt weapons as a single-class cleric is. As well, I'm able to cast all spells in full armor, even magic user spells. You can see the potency of this multi-class. For weapon proficiencies, I choose spear, sling, bastard sword, and hammer. I buy chainmail, shield, a spear, hammer, and sling. Backpack, a holy symbol, and some rations to start me out. That leaves me with five gold and five silver left over. Step 8. Alignment and name, and we're done! I choose Lawful Good as my alignment. I shall name him Arminus Telemnar. And voila! A first edition AD&D character is born. And there you have it! I have a brand new, advanced Dungeons & Dragons character that, uh, uh, I'll, uh, likely never get to play. <sighs> a pain all too real to many Dungeons & Dragons players, am I right? Not getting to play a character you rolled up for no reason doesn't qualify as actual pain. Mental health is no joke, people, and this channel does not wish to trigger people with actual pain brought on by any of a long list of valid mental concerns. Further, however, this channel does approve of free speech and the right to make jokes, and does not wish to trigger those who believe there's a war in comedy by suggesting that any mild amusement at the expense of the mental health of a puppet wizard in any way reflects upon them. Further, further, this channel supports your personal rights to enjoy what makes you happy, including, but not limited to, rolling up D&D characters for no good reason at all. But to reiterate, not getting to play your characters doesn't qualify as actual pain. Well then, I hope you've enjoyed seeing the process of character generation in advanced Dungeons & Dragons. I shall see you anon, my friends. 